I'm Paul Gillum, and I'm the chief engineer of Western Woods Repairs. For the last 30 years, we've been repairing and upgrading timber trusses. In this attic, we've got four bowstring trusses that all are in need of either repair or upgrade, and we're taking care of both of them at the same time. Bowstring trusses have a straight bottom cord, and the top cord is curved like the bow of a bow and arrow. They're all made of small members that are joined together at different joints. These members here are called the webs. These up here are the top cord, and these down here are the bottom cord. Back in the 40s, there were no snow load requirements. The first snow load analysis in Oregon came out in 1971, and we found all sorts of things. For one, when the snow is blown off one of these roofs, it just doesn't blow off the roof, it blows from one side to the other side, and all of a sudden we have three times as much snow on one side. All of the forces in these webs change direction. So this may have been a tension member, but now it's a compression member. When it changes like that, usually it's inadequate and this needs to be strengthened for those new loads. When we do a repair or upgrade design, the first thing we do is we'll come out and inspect the trusses for any damage. We look for things like breaks in the bottom cord. We look for places where the connections have failed. We look for places where the top cord may have buckled a little bit. There's several areas that we pretty much know where to look for. After we do our inspection, we map the truss, we go back and we will analyze the truss using our truss analysis software. From that, we can tell how close to the allowable design each member and each connection in the truss is. We're always looking to see where the problems are, what's causing the failures. We're not just trying to fix the failure without understanding it. Our analysis will show us this member here has compression force in it. In the way that it was designed originally, this would have been a zero force member. The thing is that if this has compression in it, it's bending the bottom cord. And when it bends the bottom cord, you've got tension and bending. We come out to the job site and guess what? That's where it's broken almost every time. They often break right here at this bottom cord splice. When that happens, we have to come in and shore up the whole roof, push it back to its original position. We take out the broken pieces first. Then we can take the bottom cord apart, put in a new member, new splice plates, and splice blocks, and all new connectors before we post tension it. We use glue lamb because getting a 40-foot glue lamb is much simpler than getting a 40-foot piece of solid saw and lumber. Post-tensioning adds a compression load to the cord that's in tension to reduce the tension to the allowable values. The system that we've come up with is we have this cable anchor right here, and we have high-strength cables, the same cables that are used in post-tensioning concrete, from that cable anchor to one just like it on the other side. Now, we don't attach the cable anchor to the bottom cord right here. What would happen if we did that is that all of this part of the cord would be good, but we'd break it from the cable anchor to the heel. So we have these rods that will take the cable cord all the way to a butt plate at the end of the truss. Those butt plates are squeezing the truss together, and that's how we get the tension in the bottom cord. This is the cable button. The cable goes through this end, comes out here, we put this cone-shaped piece on. There's an inverted cone shape here on the button, and as the cable pulls through, this gets sucked into that and squeezes the cable. So this is good for about 24,000 pounds of compression here. We post tension the bottom cord to take the stress out of the bottom cord. That's different than adding a member to the bottom. 
If you've got the dead load on the structure and it's overstressed in dead load, simply adding a member to the side of the bottom port doesn't help any. It actually makes it worse because you're adding weight to a member that's already overstressed and you're putting a whole bunch of holes in it to connect that new member to the existing member. The post-tensioning system is the ideal way of reducing the load in the bottom port so it meets today's stress requirements. You can see that we also put a member on the side of the top cord. This stiffens the top cord and adds capacity to it as well. Here you can see we've added a member to this web. In our analysis, we found out the original member was too slender for how tall it was. So we add this member and we glue it. So instead of a two and a half wide member, it's now four inches wide. That greatly increases the stiffness and prevents it from buckling. If you started with a tall member, a thin member, and you push down on it, it wants to buckle. But if you have a bigger member, same force, same length, it doesn't buckle. The bigger the member, the stiffer it is, and the less likely it is to buckle. What our goal here is, is to fix all the broken pieces, upgrade all the deficient pieces, so that these trusses will last another 50 years. We're in it to make sure that this is gonna last longer than I do and longer my kids and my grandkids.